The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. DeSantis, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You had Resolution 2334 was an anti-Israel resolution that sought to erase the history of the Jewish people and their connection to their historic homeland. Under 2334, the Western Wall, which is the holiest site in Judaism and the last remnant of the Second Temple, is considered occupied territory. You can't even make this up. But I think it's important to point out that the territory at issue that we're talking about, including the West Bank, which is historic, Judea and Samaria, some of the oldest Jewish lands dating back thousands of years, this territory is disputed. It is not occupied territory. And when you use that term for things like the Western Wall, you show that all you're trying to do is harm and attack the state of Israel, but not do this in an intellectually honest way. So if you look at, originally, in the Balfour Declaration, that entire mandate was originally put for a Jewish state, including what is now Jordan. Um, as we got into the 1920s, Britain thought that giving what was called Transjordan, what was considered the eastern part of Palestine, uh, was a reward for their help, uh, some of the Arabs, during the First World War. That had been under Turkish control for hundreds of years before World War I. It was then under British control. So you have this British mandate, and they eventually give Jordan everything east of the river, but then Jewish Palestine, this was a Jewish state, all of Israel proper, Jerusalem, uh, Judea, Samaria, you name it, that was what Britain wanted to do, and the League of Nations in 1922, which is the last legally binding document, recognized that as well. Fast forward past World War II, we get into the late 40s, and the, and the Arabs always rejected um, uh, having a, a state shared with, with Israel in that respect. So then we get to 1948 and the UN partition plan. How much measly, more ter less territory for Israel? You know, you have all these little squiggly, it's really an indefensible country. The rest, massive Arab state there, and yet Israel accepted even these little crumbs of territory. But what did Arabs do? They rejected having a state. You had invasions against Israel from all sides, and the goal was the annihilation of the Jewish state um, in 1948. So between 48 and 67, we always hear about these 1967 lines. Those are not po uh, political lines. Those are armistice lines. Israel won the war for their independence. They beat back the Arab armies. You had Egypt controlling the Gaza. You had the Jordan controlling uh, Judea, Samaria, what we know as the West Bank. So those were armistice lines, never internationally recognized. Jordan's occupation of the West Bank was not recognized internationally. Um, it's in, it, understand, when, when Arafat founded the PLO, it was in 1964, 65, when you still had these armistice lines. So Palestine Liberation Organization, what are they trying to liberate Palestine from? He's not talking about the West Bank. He's talking about Israel proper. He wanted to push the Jews to the sea. So why would we be rewarding? Palestinian Arabs rejected a state in 48. They rejected a generous offer in 2000. 2007, every time they have chosen to go to war with Israel, and they are more opposed to a Jewish state than they are interested in their own state. We do have an example, though. What happens? You talk about Israel occupation. They don't occupy the Gaza Strip. What is the Gaza Strip? Is this like a, a nice la-la land on the Mediterranean? No, it's a terror state controlled by Hamas, and they launch incessant rocket attacks against Israel. So, a Palestinian state in this area, uh, Judea, Samaria, West Bank, would be what they call Judenrein. It would be free of Jews. They would ethnically cleanse every Jew who was in anything considered earmarked for Palestinian Arabs. It's an interesting contrast because in Israel, Arab Israelis live and prosper and they're treated with e w w as, as equal citizens. So we have to get this straight 
What the UN did was totally unacceptable. This body needs to remove funding for the UN until they repeal that offending resolution, and the new administration needs to move our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in a show of solidarity with our friends in Israel. Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman